All right. Again, Video Guys Live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Facebook and YouTube. My name is James Frasca. I am a video production specialist. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that we talk about on the show, uh, feel free to send us an email or give us a call at 800-323-2325. And there's a good chance that you'll talk to me. So like I said, without further ado, let's get right into it. So today we're going to be talking about basic PTZ camera control options for live productions. And right off the bat, there's four kind of primary ways that you can control a PTZ camera. You can use something as simple as an IR remote. Uh, you can get into controllers with either serial RS-232 control, um, Visco over IP control, or even with uh, NDI, which is becoming more and more popular and really is, in our opinion, the best way to um, you know, get the best bang for your buck when it comes to your cabling specifically. So let's get right into it with the basic IR remote. So you can think of this as basically, you know, your TV remote. Uh, you point it at your camera and push the buttons to make it pan or tilt or zoom. Doesn't really matter which one you want to do. Um, you can turn on the on-screen display and that's where you can uh, interact with some of the camera settings like uh, the frame rate, the resolution, the color temperature, things like that. Um, you will have to have it connected to either an HDMI or SDI source in order to see that on-screen display. Um, one of the cool things is you can set presets with this. You know, we wouldn't recommend, you know, when you're live to be using an IR remote to do your panning and tilting. You know, it's a, it's a little bit jarring. Uh, so if you can use presets, definitely want to uh, take that into consideration. And then another thing that you want to take into consideration when you're looking at an IR remote is that it is going to be a uh, line of sight. So as you can see, you know, the uh, remote can see the camera no problem, it's able to communicate. But if I use my laptop screen here to block the signal, well, I'm still pressing the buttons, but it's not getting the signal anymore. So it is line of sight, something that you want to take into consideration. Now, one thing about the IR remotes, yes, they are, you know, a little bit more basic to use, um, but most, if not all of the PTC cameras that we offer come with the IR remote for no additional charge. Uh, so you will at least have some basic control of a PTC camera right out of the box without having to, you know, hook up any cables or anything. Um, a tech tip for using an IR remote if you are in a situation where you have multiple cameras, but you only want one camera to be affected by the IR remote, uh, we're going to recommend finding that sensor on the camera that you don't want to move and blocking it with either a piece of tape or a piece of paper or something, uh, because for the most part, uh, the IR remote will um, control any camera that it sees. You can uh, do camera select. Uh, and that's going to vary depending on the camera manufacturer. Uh, some of them have that ability, some of them don't. Uh, so if it is just a generic point and shoot at multiple cameras, it will turn or zoom or tilt all of the cameras that are in line of sight. So that is an IR remote and what it can do. The next thing that we're going to talk about is serial control. Now serial control is basically taking a cable directly from a, a joystick controller, such as the SuperJoy here, or even the Bird Dog controller that we have here, and you plug that directly into the camera, and now you have full control of that camera. And if you wanted to use multiple cameras, um, what you would have to do is you would have to daisy chain from the uh, Visca in and out ports in the back of the camera. Uh, so as you can see right here uh, in that slide, uh, the DB9 to 8-pin mini DIN, uh, the DB9 port would go into your controller, and then the 8-pin mini DIN would go into the camera. And then, like I said, if you wanted to use multiple cameras, you would have to get an 8-pin mini DIN cascade cable, which is just a male-to-male, -male, and you put that into the back of the cameras, all of the cameras that you want to daisy chain. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're looking at using serial control is that the power in the video uh, to and from the camera 
would have to come from separate cables. So you would still have to, you know, use the provided uh, power cable that comes with the camera, and uh, you would have to use either the HDMI, SDI, or um, USB out of the camera to get the video into whatever switching software or uh, hardware you're using. Um, I can talk about this all day long, but Paul from PTZ Optics did a really good uh, video on him setting up a couple, uh, a huddle cam camera, a PTZ Optics camera, and using their joystick G3 to set up serial control for their controller. So let's uh, give that a watch. The DB9 connector allows for RS-232 connections to cameras, generally using an 8-pin mini-DIN connector. Let's connect the included DB9 to 8-pin mini-DIN camera control cable into this connection port and screw the terminal connectors to ensure a secure connection. Now let's connect the 8-pin mini-DIN camera side of our DB9 cable to a HuddleCam HD 10X camera. You will notice that this camera features a Visca in port and a Visca out port. The Visca out port is used for daisy chaining multiple cameras together using RS-232 or RS-485 control. If you want to add an additional camera to the control in a daisy chain setup, you will need a cascade cable. For your first camera in the chain, we will be connecting to it using a DB9 to an 8-pin mini-DIN cable. Each additional camera will be connected using an 8-pin mini-DIN cascade cable. By default, most cameras are set up to receive Visca commands on Visca address 1. If you are setting up a daisy Daisy chain camera control system, you will need to set each camera with a unique address for each camera in your chain. So that's a really great video kind of showing you the workflow of how everything is connected. Uh, if you want to watch the full video, it's about six minutes long. Uh, you can type in the uh, YouTube URL that I have underneath the video there. I uh, definitely recommend um, following them because they also put out really informed uh, informational videos on PTZ cameras. So we're gonna kind of explain their workflow again in uh, this diagram here. So you have your joystick G3 controller. You're gonna put the uh, DB9 portion of that cable into the controller. Then you put the eight pin mini DIN into your cameras. And as you can see, you're going to cascade the eight pin mini DIN uh, RS-232 cables from each camera that you want connected to the controller, and then you will need to have either HDMI or SDI to go into uh, some kind of hardware switcher, uh, such as, I believe that's the Roland One B, B1HD. Um, just real quick, I wanted to show you that in this situation right here, if we can pull up, I believe it's input five, um, we do have our RS-232 plugged in right here. And then that is plugged into our uh, PTZ Optics Move 4K uh, 30X right there. And so that is using serial control. So the next thing that you can use to control your cameras is serial over IP. Serial over IP uses different protocols uh, such as uh, Visca, Pelco P, and Pelco D, which are the most common um, IP protocols. Um, this allows you to connect your cameras to a network switch and then be able to have the cameras communicate to the controller, controller and vice versa through uh, basically a centralized hub, which would be the network switch. Now, similar to um, serial uh, control, you will have to get your video uh, a different way. You have to use either the SDI or HDMI out of the camera to plug into your uh, switching hardware or software. And we're always going to recommend using SDI because SDI can uh, run much longer lengths. An HDMI cable can only go about maybe 25, 30 feet before you start losing uh, quality in the video. Uh, whereas an SDI cable can go upwards of 300 feet. And then also it has a locking mechanism in it. So you don't have to worry about, you know, it, uh, accidentally getting unplugged, especially if you are 100, 200 feet away from your camera. The second tech tip that we wanted to say is that since you are using a network switch to make the devices communicate to each other, a lot of network switches, uh, not a lot of them, but some network switches have the ability to provide power over ethernet uh, from the switch to the camera. So that's one less cable that you have to worry about. 
because now you're getting control and power uh, from that one Cat5 or Cat6 cable, uh, but you still need to have either your SDI or HDMI uh, coming from the camera into your uh, switching software or hardware. So in this uh, layout, you can see that all of our cameras and our switch, uh, our, our controller, are connected to that Netgear um, AV switch, network switch. And then via uh, SDI, you could plug those into something like a Pearl 2 to run your production. So you get your control and your power from the uh, network switch. And then you would have the video going into the Pearl 2. And of course, the Netgear M4250 line of um, network switches are what we're always going to recommend. They have PoE uh, included in them, and you know they're certified for uh, AV video over IP. Excuse me. Uh, so definitely, if you have any questions about the uh, Netgear M4250 switches, give us a call 800-323-2325. Just throwing that plug in there, and we're actually going to plug it in there again uh, in a couple slides here. But we're getting, getting ahead of ourselves. We, we love the uh, M4250 switches. So then that leaves us with NDI. NDI stands for Network uh, Design Interface. NDI allows for everything on the same network to communicate to each other. Uh, so if you have your controller and your cameras and your switcher all on the same network, they can all talk to each other. You can go from camera to switch to switching software and back the other way too. So this can provide power, control, and video all over that one uh, Cat5 or Cat6 Ethernet cable, uh, combining everything into one cable and making your cable management super, super, super simple. Um, just one other note that we wanted to say about NDI is NDI comes in two flavors, essentially. You have full bandwidth NDI, and then you have NDI HX. Uh, basically, full bandwidth NDI is high resolution, uh, but high bandwidth uh, to come along with that, whereas NDI HX does some compression. Uh, it will compress the video a little bit and then save some of that bandwidth. Um, a lot of cameras on the market right now uh, like the PTZ Optics Move 4K and the Canon uh, CRN700 are NDI HX compatible, but then there are plenty of cameras on the market that are full NDI, such as the Bird Dog um, line of cameras. So it's, it's really a matter of what works in your uh, workflow the best. And yeah, so that's NDI. And again, everything all in one. That's what we're gonna stress uh, so much about NDI. You get power, control, and video all through that one cable. And as you can see, it really makes cable management super easy. So all you need to do is connect your cameras to your switch, connect your controller to your switch, and then connect your switching uh, software or hardware to your switch. That's it. That's all the cables that you need to make something like this work. Uh, makes it super easy and uh, manageable. One more time to really hone it in. NDI, there's one cable to do it all. Audio and video, power over ethernet, and PTZ control. One thing that we wanted to talk about too is even if you are using some NDI converters uh, to uh, bring a camera that does not have NDI in it, there are special converters that uh, are like the KiloView U40 encoder that allow you to still get the PTZ control even if the camera does not natively have IP control uh, built into it. So if you don't know what a NDI encoder is, is it basically takes an HDMI or an SDI signal and converts it into an NDI signal. Now, normally you would not be able to get PTZ control along with that conversion, but the KiloView U40 is uh, kind of um, the Swiss army knife of this situation because you can get that RS-232 control also in that encoder, uh, which makes it uh, super handy. Uh, so, so again, there's just options for you to make things work in your workflow. And like we said, 
we can't talk about control and NDI and IP video without talking about the Netgear M4250 uh, series of uh, network switches. They come in desktop models and rack mount models. The desktop models are a little bit smaller, they're a little bit quieter, uh, and they are meant to you know, be in smaller studios where you can just put that on a desktop, screw it into the desktop, and it's there and it's ready to go. Uh, and then we also have rack mount models, which are a little bit bigger. They'll fit into a, a rack system, no problem. And they go all the way up to like 40 ports with like 2000 watts of power available. So again, it just shows you how versatile all of these things are and modular. And there really is a, a PTZ camera and a controller and a network switch for every level of production. So if you have any questions about any of this, uh, you know, make sure to give us a call 800-323-2325. Now we wanted to talk about one way, one more way that you can control um, your PTZ cameras uh, over IP, and that is through a production system. So you know, OBS has PTZ control, vMix has PTZ control, uh, Wirecast and TriCaster all have PTZ control built into their software. And of course, we want to talk about uh, Wirecast and TriCaster uh, and how they use PTZ control in their systems. So let's watch this great video, about a minute and a half, on uh, the three different ways that you can control PTZ camera in Wirecast. There are many different ways to control the camera, including different views inside the PTZ controller window. What we're looking at right now is the map view. This is roughly a representation of a 360 degree field that the camera can control in, both the up, down, left, and right positions. You can also control the zoom of the camera using the zoom slider below, as well as the focus, even the exposure of the camera using shutter and iris sliders. Again, if you want to go back to the baseline position, just click the home button. In addition to the map view, you also have the D-pad view. This is much like the up and down, left and right buttons on your keyboard. In fact, Wirecast and the PTZ controller are meant to respond using the up, down, left, and right arrows on your keyboard, which is great for fine tuning the last few spots on a particular camera angle you're trying to get. You also have the analog view. This is much like a click and drag area, almost like a joystick. So you can get X, Y, and left and right positions or diagonal commands at the same time. That is a great video. I want to say that we did cut it down to fit into our video. So again, the full video is about eight minutes long and they go into uh, some real depth on how you can control a PTZ camera in Wirecast. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that, you can either give us a call or you can again follow that link uh, in our PowerPoint right there and you can get more information on Wirecast and how to uh, get PTZ control out of it. We in our studio use TriCaster TC1 Pro. And so we thought, why not just show you how we can control PTZ cameras in our studio and how we uh, usually do. So without further ado, Adam at the TriCaster is going to show you how to bring in a PTZ camera into your system and then the basic controls that you get along with that. Hey everyone, so we're over at the TriCaster now. This is our multi viewer. And when connecting a camera with an NDI, they're very easy to bring into any input. So right now, our P200, which you can see on screen, is input four. If we click this gear and then go to the PTZ tab, you can see now we have pan, tilt, and zoom capabilities as well as being able to set auto exposure and white balance and autofocus. All right, that was a great little demo. Thank you, Adam. We're actually gonna come back to Adam in a minute here. Um, one thing that we also wanted to talk about uh, because it was mentioned in the Wirecast video and you may have saw it in uh, the uh, demo that Adam just did is you can even set up presets uh, 
whether that's with uh, IR remote, bird dog controller, um, PTZ optics controller, any controller can really do presets and so can the production systems. So I thought it would be pretty cool to also show you just like how Adam was able to bring in our P200 into our TriCaster, I'm gonna show you how to bring in a camera into Bird Dog's controller and then show you how to do a preset with uh, that camera. So if we can go to this top down right here, as you can see, we have our P200 right here and we have that pointed at our PTZ Optics Move 4K um, over there. And I already have the camera brought into our uh, controller here, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, it's pretty easy actually. So you're just gonna hit search, you're gonna go down to NDI IP, and then you're gonna hit start search. And now what that's going to do is it's going to look for any NDI source that is on the network currently. And right now for this show, we actually have, I think, four uh, PTZ cameras that we're using. Uh, we have this camera that we're pointing at right here. Uh, we have the PTZ Optics Move 4K 30X, the 12X, and also the P200. And of course, it did not find any. So let me do this again. Start search. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit wonky. Uh, the cable might have been loose, uh, so we'll try this again and see if anything comes up. I think my cable was just loose because now you can see uh, there's four cameras that are on the network. Uh, you will need to know what your uh, camera's IP address is, and there's plenty of different ways that you can find that out. Um, the easiest way is to just use uh, NDI Analysis, uh, which is a free program inside of NDI Tools. I happen to already know that the camera that I'm looking for is this second camera, 192.168.100.29. That is our uh, P200. You can select what number camera you want it to be as, and then it will show the name. And so everything is confirmed. So now I'm just gonna hit exit, 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 exit. And now I'm gonna hit one cam and now you can see I'm controlling our P200. And Adam had control of it. I can have control of it. We can both have control of it at the same time, actually. I mean, not exactly the same time, uh, but he can also move it if he wanted to. Now I'm gonna show you real quick how to do uh, presets within the Bird Dog controller. So I already have my camera selected. I'm gonna put it in a position that I want it to be in. And you know what? I like it pointing at this uh, PTZ Optics Move 4K. So I'm gonna select what number preset I want it to be. So in this case, I'm gonna hit one, and then I'm gonna press and hold preset on the uh, top of the numpad. And now, as you can see, after three seconds, it says define preset 001. So now I need to have a second preset to go to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move down here. Oh, look at Adam, there he is sitting at our TriCaster. I'll zoom out a little bit, why not? And now I want this to be preset two. So again, I'm gonna hit the number on the keypad that I want it to be, which is preset two. And then I'm gonna hold preset again for three seconds. And after three seconds, it will say define preset two. And now if I wanted to uh, snap between the two presets, all I have to do is hit one for preset one, and then I'm gonna call preset one. And same thing, if I want to go back to Adam, I'm gonna hit two and then call preset two. So it really is that simple to um, you know, use NDI to get the uh, cameras to show up on your network and then be able to control them and do some of these more advanced uh, steps such as presets. Uh, so I'm gonna have Adam show you how we do presets in the TriCaster. Um, so Adam, take it away. So we're back in the TriCaster and the options for your presets is in the same spot that our control is. As you can see here, you have 16 slots and you can set them to be anything and they can snap back and forth. You can also set the speed at which they go back and forth. So now we can switch between at will and you can use this to set up a multitude of shots and be able to go back and forth 
whenever you please. So as you can see, if you wanted to set up some macros and you know make it look as if you had more than one camera in your studio, you can using presets and things of the such. Now we will be talking about this next week. Like I said, we're going to go into a little bit more in depth uh, into presets uh, because some controllers allow you to get really specific in terms of how long it takes to go from point A to point B, but then not only from point A to point B, but from point B to C to C to D and up to, you know, like five minutes of a sequence uh, to be able to, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm trying to say, um, reliably and consistently, that's the word, consistently perform those movements uh, in a timely manner. So one thing that I kind of wanted to end on here is this slide from PTZ Optics. I thought it was a really good um, you know, workflow chart to show that, again, you can use all of these different control options in conjunction with each other. You do not have to just use the IR remote or just use NDI. As you can see, that uh, SuperJoy controller is connected uh, be a serial control to some cameras, but then also it is connected via uh, IP, uh, such as Sony Visca, to some other cameras, and that one joystick controller can control both, um, you know, versions of control, whether it's serial or IP or NDI, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they can all communicate and do the same functionality. And the reason that we wanted to focus on this is to show that you don't have to upgrade your entire production system all at once. If you wanted to, you know, just upgrade one of your three cameras or upgrade uh, your controller, you can do that. A lot of these uh, devices are backwards compatible and that makes it super easy uh, and super user friendly uh, for somebody who, who may not have the budget to upgrade all three cameras and the controller you know maybe this year you get one or two cameras and then next year when the budget comes you get the other the other camera and the controller so i just thought that this was a really good workflow slide from ptc optics that we wanted to focus on so to kind of highlight everything that we talked about today we talked about ir remotes which come with the controller and then we also talked about serial control ip control and ndi control and as you can see, there is a keyboard, uh, a joystick controller for every situation. And for the most part, the, uh, the joystick controllers are backwards compatible. You know, if you got the serial controller, it's only going to be able to do serial control. But if you've got the IP control, that can do serial control and IP control. And then if you've got the SuperJoy, the SuperJoy can do serial control, can do N uh, IP control and NDI. So for the most part, they uh, a lot of the controllers on the market are backwards compatible. They can do uh, some of the more advanced things. They can also do uh, some of the more basic setup. And you know we're not limited to just PTC Optics and Huddle Cam when it comes to controllers. Uh, Bird Dog make it makes a controller. Canon makes a controller. JVC makes a controller. And we kind of touched upon this uh, uh, several times now that uh, Panasonic also makes some controllers. And Panasonic makes really advanced controllers. Uh, these are the ones that can do, like I said, you know, not just point A to point B, but point A to B to C to D to E, and you know, have different time lengths in between those, um, you know, points on that chart. So tune in next week because we're going to be doing uh, a more deep dive into those kind of presets and uh, you know, a little bit more advanced workflows. Um, Without further ado, I, I, I hope that you learned something uh, today and, uh, you know, it's really cool all of this technology and there are so many different ways to control a PTZ camera these days. Um, that's, that's really all I got. So make sure that you follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we're going to be live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff that we talked about, any of the PTC cameras that are on the table, any of the controllers that are on the table, give us a call, 800-232-23, no, butchered that phone number, 800-323-2325, or visit us online at videoguys.com. Um, without further ado, peace.
Video Guys is available Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay connected with all of our updates. And you can like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for our live videos, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.